Thank you. The matter is open for discussion. Was someone, Councillor Sam Prodman. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I'd like to move that the matter be deferred to a council briefing and then return to council after the briefing. We have a seconder for that, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you. I'll speak to that. Um, it is clear that we have a need for seniors living um, developments uh, in this area. It's uh, an area of distinct need. And um, in many ways, the development that's been proposed here is sensitive to the landscape uh, and praiseworthy, subject to some things that I would have questions about down the track. For example, whether the development will be single story and sits in its landscape uh, lightly in that sense. But the matter before us tonight is whether we're going to advance a planning proposal that requires an ad hoc amendment to our LEP. And as a matter of principle, I'm very leery of ad hoc changes to our LEP. I'm also extremely cautious about something that has, in my opinion, been rushed to the chamber. If the Land and Environment Court ruling was handed down in November, certainly we in the chamber and by correspondence that I've received today alone, clearly the broader community are grappling to get their head around this. And I'd like to know more so that I can be satisfied that I'm making a decision on this planning proposal on its merits. My questioning to Ms Sutherland earlier was, was geared around what, what I think is the central question for us in this chamber. And that is, we're going to get a seniors living development on that site. The Land and Environment Court have ruled that way. But there is a difference in character between a seniors living development under one title that might be run by a consortium or a company and which would attract a certain socioeconomic profile of clientele. I suspect possibly lower socioeconomic clientele, people that are in need of that kind of accommodation but can't afford it, and um, a, a living development that is owner-occupied as a result of a subdivision. Now, there's a place for that too. It's just a case for us in this chamber as to which of those two models serves our community best. Uh, so I'd like this to be deferred to a briefing so that we can talk through those issues and hear not only from staff and proponents, but also have more time to hear from members of the community who have serious concerns about the way that this has come to the chamber. And, you know, I'm mindful of the Land and Environment Court ruling, unlike Ms. Mother, Ms. Sutherland's characterisation that this is merely an anomaly, uh, the Land and Environment Court, in my opinion, was fairly clear in saying yes to the seniors living development and no to the subdivision. It was not consonant with our planning instruments. And we would be, the community would be right to ask questions of us if we rushed into an ad hoc change to our LEP just to change the character of this development, which it's admitted will still go ahead with precisely the same scale. So the, the community's uh, interest in securing a facility like this will already be be matched. What this does boil to is the profitability of that development for the proponent, and indeed who that proponent is. I'd like to see more time for us to work through those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Sam Brogner. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. I'm speaking against the amendment. Firstly, to correct something that Councillor Sheather said, and through you, sir, um, the court has not approved this. The court has approved the seniors living development, but the court was quite specific in saying that what's being advanced to us now as a proponent initiated planning proposal was not consonant with our planning instruments. What's been suggested to us tonight is that we have to bend or break our own rules to make this legal. And it's perfectly sensible for us to say, right, well, sometimes we do that. Sometimes we do amend our LEP, but there's got to be a jolly good reason and I haven't been presented with that reason here, and I want to learn more, especially when members of the community are saying, well, we're key stakeholders in this, and we haven't been asked, and we don't consent, and we don't like the idea. I want to hear more from those people. If a matter is sufficiently controversial, is that it immediately causes four councillors to recuse themselves, something that's almost unprecedented in the six years that I've been on council, one of them with a significant pecuniary interest despite declaring that her associates are not property developers, then it behoves us to take our time. 
and to have a briefing and to hear from the community and to have more time to discuss this. I'm acutely uncomfortable about being pressured into making a significant decision of this type um, with this much notice. Councillor Shiva says, well, Councillor Shiva asked, you know, whether we have ever prescribed a developer in terms of what kind of management structure they impose, whether it's community title or owner occupied. But the thing is, although it is rare, that is precisely what we are being asked to do here. We've been invited to make precisely this adjudication. And even though we might be curious about whether this change is more profitable for the developer, our role here is to secure the best result for the community. And there is an open question, an unanswered question, about whether a seniors living development under community title would be a better outcome from the community. And that is the only thing that I'm interested in. And I don't have the information in front of me to be able to make that judgment. I think we have to have a care about how, how we proceed, considering how controversial this and the protagonists involved in this story are. I don't think that at the moment, if we were pressed to make a decision tonight, that it would pass the pub test. And that's why I'm urging everybody to caution. If we have a briefing and it comes back to the chamber, then you know I will yield to the chamber's decision. But at the moment, I think we're on dangerous territory to rush to a decision. Therefore, I hope that we vote to have our briefing. If not, I'll put the amendment. The amendment by Councillor Sheeta is the recommendation in the business paper. If you support that, please raise your hand. In favour are Councillor Reardon, Councillor Sheeta, Councillor Kotlash, Councillor Dogramachi, Councillor Calvert. Those against? Councillor Jurek, Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Sam Progno declare it carried. The amendment becomes the motion. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll ask for a right of reply, Councillor Sam Progno. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, that's disappointing. I think the judgment of the community will be um, rendered. Um, Mr. Deputy Mayor, quite simply, you're wrong. I mean, if we send this to Gateway in this form, the, whole, the horse is bolted. And those people who have said this is very precipitous, this is suspiciously precipitous, this flies in the face of what the Land and Environment Court said. The Land and Environment Court may have said that it falls to us to make the decision about the model that this seniors living development, which will proceed, will take. And yet we have not been presented with the information about which of those two models would be best. best. And I'm sure that staff or experts could speak to us with some wisdom about which of those models would be best. There are differences in terms of the socioeconomic profile, in terms of the cost to the end user, in terms of the tenure or security that is conferred to uh, the end users of this facility. All of those questions have been swept into the bin because despite the fact that the Land and Environment Court said, this is in your court now, you choose wisely. We've said, we don't care. We've been given this with a few days notice and we'll push it off to Gateway and that's it. I think that's a disgraceful state of affairs for us to be telling the community who are watching. So unfortunately, I can't support the amended motion that is now before us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sam Progno. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please raise your hand. In favour is Councillor Reardon, Councillor Sheeta, Councillor Kotlash, Councillor Dogramachi, Councillor Calvert. Those against? Councillor Sam Progno, Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Jurek. Absent is Councillor Weigel, Councillor Connolly, Councillor Lyons Bucket, and the Mayor. Declare the motion carried. Thank you.